you type, let's say, create a PostgreSQL database in AWS, in Cloud Code or Cursor or whichever agent you use. And then you hit enter and boom, it just works. Database created, configured, running like magic, but it's not magic. Behind that simple request is an intricate dance between you, an orchestrator called an agent, and a massive language model. Most people think the AI is doing everything. They're wrong. The AI cannot touch your files, it cannot run commands, and it cannot do anything on its own. Nothing. So, how the hell does it work? How does your intent turn into actual results? That's what we are going to break down. The real architecture, the three key players, and why understanding this matters if you're using those tools every single day. Before we discover how agents work, let me address a related problem. When you're building AI features into your own applications, like semantic search, Q&A summarization, you typically end up bolting on fragile services and writing glue code to connect everything. Vector database here, embedding service there, LLM integration somewhere else. It's a mess. And that's where the sponsor of this video comes in. RavenDB is a NoSQL document database known for staying out of your way in production. No babysitting, no band-aids, no weird 3 a.m. alerts. It includes AI features built directly into the database. Vector search, embedding generation, gen AI workflows, even AI agent creation, all native to the data layer. You're not adding external services or managing sync jobs. You can issue vector queries and structured filters in the same database call. RavenDB provides integrations with OpenAI, Azure OpenAI, and Olama. So, agents can generate and retrieve embeddings, summarize content, or trigger actions. Check out the link in the description to get started. And now, let's discover how agents work. Let's start with a simple scenario. Imagine you're using Cloud Code or Cursor or any other coding agent and you type this intent. What happens when you hit enter? You get a PostgreSQL database in AWS. That's the promise, right? But how the hell does that actually work? What's happening behind the scenes to turn that simple request into reality? Now, before we dive in, quick terminology here. When people say AI agent or just agent, they usually mean the whole damn thing, the entire system. I'm going to be more precise here. I will call that complete system an agentic system. And when I say agent, I mean specifically the orchestration layer sitting between you and the LLM. Now, keep that distinction in mind, it is important. So, let's start by defining the key players. First, the user, that's you. You provide intent, whether it's a task, a request, or a question. You get responses back and you can clarify when needed. Next the agent. It sits between you and the LLM acting as an intermediary. Finally, the LLM, the large language model. This is the brain doing the reasoning and decision making. Think GPT-5, Claude, models like that. It receives context from the agent and generates responses. Those are basic definitions. As we move through increasingly complex architectures, we will expand on what each of those actors actually does. The simplest possible architecture would have the user, you, sending intent to an agent, which passes that intent to the LLM, which responds back through the same chain. If anyone actually built systems that way, it was a long time ago. It's way too simplistic. We need more, much more. So what's missing? Let's talk about system prompts. A system prompt is the foundational instruction that defines how an LLM behaves. It sets the role, the behavior, the capabilities. Agent developers set these prompts. They're completely invisible to you as a user. Here's an example. Always explain your reasoning step by step before providing answers. It's short, but it completely changes how the LLM responds. Now, with the system prompts in the mix, we get a more sophisticated setup. You send intent to the agent, the agent sends context to the LLM, not just raw content. That context includes the system prompt plus your intent. The LLM generates a response that goes back to the agent, then to you. This architecture, user to agent to LLM with context, is essentially what you get with something like ChatGPT. 
It's mainly for answering questions, for having conversations, not much more. So what exactly is context? Context is everything sent to the LLM in a single request. It includes the system prompt, conversation history, your intent, and any other information the LLM needs to generate a response. It's the complete picture the LLM sees. So that covers the basics, the key players and how they communicate. But this architecture still cannot do much beyond answering questions. To actually accomplish tasks, we need something more. Even with system prompts and context, agents cannot do real work. They can't. They need tools. Tools are functions the agent can execute on behalf of the LLM. Things like reading files, executing bash commands, searching the web, editing code. The LLM requests tools, then the agent executes them, and the results go back into the context. So how does the LLM know which tools to execute? Huh? What do you think? Tool descriptions are included in the context. The agent sends tool names, parameters, descriptions, everything the LLM needs to know what is available. Then the LLM analyzes your intent, looks at available tools, then requests specific tools with specific parameters. Agent executes those requests and returns results. So with tools in the picture, the roles expand. The user now also reviews and approves actions when needed. That's very important when tools are making actual changes. The agent becomes an intermediary between user, LLM, and tools. It executes tools requested by the LLM. Crucially, it never makes decisions. Agent never makes decisions. It only facilitates communication and execution. And the LLM? Well, it now generates responses and requests tool execution. But it never executes tools directly. It only requests them. So now we have a user sending intent to the agent. The agent sends context, which includes system prompt, intent, and tool descriptions to the LLM. The LLM now knows that tools are available. It just knows that they are there. And it generates a response back to the agent and then to you. But wait, how can the LLM instruct the agent to execute tools if all it does is generate a response that gets sent back to you? If the LLM just responds once, how does it even trigger tool execution? And the answer to that one is loops. An agent loop is the cycle where agent sends context to the LLM, the LLM responds with either tool requests or final answer. And then the agent executes those tools and results get added to the context and the process repeats until the LLM provides the final response. With loops, the agent's role expands again. It still does everything we mentioned, but now it also manages the agentic loop. Plan, act, observe, repeat. And it builds and maintains the context that gets sent to the LLM with each iteration. The LLM's role also gets a crucial clarification. It's stateless. It has no memory between API calls. Every time the agent sends context to the LLM, it's a fresh request. The LLM only knows what's in that context. Nothing more. So here's the complete flow. You send intent to the agent. The agent sends context to the LLM. That's the system prompt, your intent, and tool descriptions. The LLM can either request tools or provide the final answer. If it requests tools, the agent executes them, gets results, and loops back, sending updated context to the LLM again. This repeats until the LLM has enough information and sends the final answer back to the agent, which sends it to you. So that's the core architecture. Agent manages the loop, LLM provides the reasoning, tools do the work. But there are practical considerations when you scale this up. Agents don't just have built-in tools. They can also integrate external tools through MCP. So MCP, or Model Context Protocol, is a standard protocol for connecting external tools to agents in addition to those built-in tools. It allows dynamic tool integration without modifying the agent itself. So think database connectors, or API clients, or custom business logic. You can plug those in 
and the LLM gets access to them just like uh, it gets access to built-in tools. So the architecture stays the same. But now the agent sends context to the LLM, and that context includes descriptions of both built-in tools and MCP tools. The LLM can request either built-in tools or MCP tools. The agent executes them, gets results, and loops back with updated context. Now, there's a practical limit to all this. Context size. Context size is the maximum information that can be sent to an LLM in a single request. It's measured in tokens, which is basic unit of text processing, let's say. A token is roughly a word or part of a word. Different models have different context limits, and those limits change over time. When you exceed that limit, the context must be compacted. So what is it? What is context compacting? Well, it's the process of reducing context size when limits are hit. There are several methods, though. You can summarize all conversation turns. You can remove less relevant tool outputs. You can truncate file contents. The key, nevertheless, is to keep the system prompt and recent messages intact. Those are critical. The trade-off is obvious. Reduced context means the LLM has less information to work with. Less information means potentially worse decisions. So let's bring this all together. Agents like Cloud Code, Cursor, and others are orchestrators. They sit between your intent, the available tools, and the LLM. That's their role, coordination. You provide the intent, like create a PostgreSQL database on AWS, and that's where it starts. The LLM provides the reasoning and instructions. It figures out what needs to happen and tells the agent which tools to execute. Like, read this file, run that command, search for this information. The LLM never touches those tools directly. It just requests them. The agent, on the other hand, executes everything. It runs the tools, it gathers the results, it builds the context, and it sends it back to the LLM. It manages the loop until the LLM has everything it needs to fulfill your intent. And here's the key thing to understand. The agent is the only dumb actor in this system. It doesn't think, it doesn't decide. It only does what it's told, either by you or by the LLM. It's pure execution, no intelligence. The LLM provides the brains, you provide the intent, and the agent makes it happen. It's a dance between three components, you, the agent, and the LLM, with the agent as the coordinator making it all work. Without the agent, the LLM is just answering questions. With the agent, it can actually do things. Thank you for watching. See you in the next one. Cheers.